Okay, let's talk about cable distances. But first, let's take a minute and let's talk about the two main cable types that are used in the surveillance industry. Uh, first, and the one that's been used for decades, is coax cable. This is also known as RG59 and RG6 coax. Um, you can now transmit high definition video over coax. That's what our HDCVI systems do. It's a very durable, heavy duty uh, cable. The fittings are easy to put on, and you can go extremely long distances with um, coax cable. Then we have network cable. Network cable powers the latest high definition camera systems. It's not as durable a cable, um, but it's easy to work with. Uh, it's the same exact network cable that you have going from your computer to your internet modem. It's just a standard network cable. This is also known as Cat5e or Cat6. We'll call it network cable. Now both cables are offered in different sizes. For example, we offer the coax cable with video and power. It's called Siamese when it's got video and power on it. We offer these in 65, 100, 150 foot. Um, pre-made cable lengths, and then a 500 foot box where you can just pull exactly what you need, cut it, put the fittings on. And same thing with network. Network cable we offer in uh, 50, 75, 100, 150, and 200 foot pre-made cable lengths with the RJ11 jacks already put on, so it's just plug and play. Um, you can also buy a 1,000 foot box of network cable, Cat5e, pull exactly what you need, cut it, and put the fittings on. You also have the options of connecting two pre-made cables together for a, a further distance. Um, we'll go over that in just a minute. This is our HDCVI series right here, and the network cable is our uh, HDIP and our Elite IP systems. They use network cable. Now by default, standard coax and network cable is not intended to be outdoors. Um, it's okay to use these cables if you protect them from the elements and specifically UV rays. So for example, you could run a coax cable up under your eave, tuck it into your soffit so that it's not exposed to the direct weather. And, and specifically the sun's UV rays will break down a cable quicker than anything. So if it's going to be ran across a roof or, or buried in a trench out to a gate or a barn or a shop um, or a storage shed or anything like that, uh, you want to do one of two things. You either want to use direct burial cable, which we offer in both coax and network. Um, you can bury this cable right in the ground and it's designed to be there for decades and will work beautifully, flawlessly. Or you need to protect the cable. You can use the standard cables, but you need to protect it. And you can do that by either running conduit, which is a little harder, but, but I installed for years and I like to use PVC pipe sprinkler pipe because it's really cheap, it's easy to cut, put the fittings on. So you just dig a, you know, a, a little tiny trench six, eight inches deep, run your PVC pipe in it, bury it, and then just pull your cable through that pipe out to wherever you're going and you're done. It makes it really simple that way. Those are the two main types of cables. Each of the cables have different, excuse me, different maximum distances that we're going to talk about right now. Okay, let's talk about maximum cable distances for network cable. Now this would be for our Elite IP series and our HD IP series. Now, network cable is very simple. There's only two distances that you have to know about, and that is a maximum distance for Cat5 cable is 220 feet. For Cat6 cable, it's 300 feet. So any cable runs under those distances, and all you have to do is plug one end of the cable into the DVR, run the cable out, plug the other end into the camera, and turn the DVR on. The DVR sends through the cable, sends power out to the camera, and the camera sends HD digital video back to the DVR, all through the same cable. It's just plug and play. So it's very clean that way. Now if you need to go further than 220 feet on Cat5, 300 feet on Cat6, we can extend the signal. And the reason we have to do that is because out at uh, 220 feet, the signal starts to get weak. We need to generate both the data signal and the power we're sending out to the camera. And we do that with this great little black box right here. It's, it's not a powered box. You don't have to power it. You just simply um, plug it in line with the cable going out to the camera. So for example, you may take a 200 foot cable here, plug one end into the DVR, run it out 200 feet, plug it into this uh, PoE extender here, 
And then you can take another maybe 150 foot or 200 foot cable, plug that in to the extender, and then run the rest of the cable out to the camera and plug it into the camera. So now you have a maximum transmission distance of 350 feet. And at the 200 foot mark, we've regenerated the digital signal and boosted the power so that the night vision will work out at those distances. It's very simple that way. Now you can do up to three of these units on one camera, so you can really get out a considerable distance using standard network cable. And that's it. That's as difficult as, as wiring our Elite IP and our HDIP series gets. You just simply plug it in at one end, plug it into the, the other end, and you're done. Okay, let's talk about maximum distances for coax cable. This would be our HD CVI series. Now you can use either RG59 or RG6 coax cable. Maximum distance to transmit video on RG59 is 1,500 feet. That's a long way. On RG6, because it's a little thicker cable, you can transmit the video up to 2,000 feet. Very few cameras got to go that far, but you can do it. Uh, and you don't have to do anything special to go that distance. Um, those are the maximum distances for video. Now, maximum distances for power is a little different. Maximum distance for power is a limitation of the cable size. Power, you have a positive and a negative, and you're transmitting uh, direct DC power out to the camera. And so maximum distance on our pre-made cables in our 500-foot box is 250 feet. You don't want to send power further than 250 feet on 18-gauge wire. Because if you try and go further than that, um, you may not be delivering enough power to the camera and you start to starve the camera and the camera doesn't uh, perform at its top level or at all. It may not perform at all. And so if you need to go further than 250 feet, you have to increase the diameter of the power cable. That way there's less resistance and the power can go further. So if you're running, uh, let's say you have a camera out at 1,000 feet and you're using coax cable to send the video back, you've got to find local power out there within 250 feet to power the camera. Now you can go further by increasing the diameter of the power cable. And so if you use 16 gauge wire, you can go up to 300 feet. If you use 14 gauge wire, you can go up to 400 feet. And if you use 12 gauge wire, you can go up to 500 foot power run out to the camera. Past that, you're going to have to find a power outlet close to the camera and run a separate cable to the camera to power it. Uh, but that still gives you plenty of room to work. And most 99.9% um, uh, .9 of all surveillance cameras fall within the uh, 250 foot mark. Now you can extend uh, cable runs with our pre-made cable. So you could take a 50 foot uh, pre-made cable, 60 foot pre-made cable, and you can actually plug that into another cable. You simply plug power to power, and then you use a little barrel fitting, we call this a barrel fitting, you plug that into one side of the video connector, plug this into the other side of the video connector, and we've just coupled those two cables together, and now we have 65 plus 65, 130 feet of, of cable just by doing it that way. Now we recommend that you don't make this connection this way, but you can extend cables if you find that you're just short and you, you just got to go a little further. You can just plug another pre-made cable into it that way and, and extend the distance. There is also video balance. This is a video balance right here. Now what this does, this takes the coax signal. Let's say that you've got a cable or... This takes the coax signal and turns it into a Cat5 signal, a network signal. So you can actually take the signal from coax, plug it into one of these video balance. You can tie a Cat5 or Cat6 cable onto this and run 1,500 feet and then come out of the cap 5 with another video balance right into the DVR. So it goes coax to video balance to network cable, network cable to balance to DVR. So you're going from coax transmission to, to network transmission back to coax transmission to the DVR. So we have a lot of different options as far as um, transmitting video. Uh, if you have any questions or you have a special application, give us a call. I bet we can figure it out.